Um, you want to get down now. Go show daddy you're not in your armpit. Okay. So uh, I got an email. Well, actually, Audrey at my office got uh, two emails from someone saying that they wanted me to talk about pancreatitis in dogs. Well, those, uh, well, cats too. Those of you who have been watching me over the years know that I've talked about pancreatitis a lot. Um, but I'm going to do it again because we have a lot of new viewers. And I, I, we need to dispel some myths. One of the biggest myths is that high fat in the diet is what causes pancreatitis. And that um, if you have a dog who's, or a cat who has had pancreatitis in the, in the past, that you should put them on a zero fat diet. And that is so unhealthy. That is not what we need to do. And, you know, proof of why that is not the only thing that contributes to pancreatitis what ends up happening is these pets that develop a case of pancreatitis most often are prescribed a prescription diet, which is low fat, easy to digest, blah, blah, blah. And even though the pet owners are extremely strict and they never give anything other than the horrible prescription diet, their pets still develop bouts of pancreatitis. Now that's proof right there that it is not only diet related and that it's not only fat related. Now, certainly if you suddenly feed your pet um, drippings from Thanksgiving dinner, the, the, you know, the drippings from the turkey, or like I did once, uh, some of the fat that was uh, from a chicken that I had roasted, which what a dumb move on my part, I know better. Um, Bacon grease. When if you suddenly give that sort of thing to your pet who is who has never had that, yeah, you're probably going to get a bout of pancreatitis. If your pet gets into the trash, you're probably going to have a bout of pancreatitis. If you switch your pet from a very low fat diet suddenly to a very high fat diet, particularly if it is a cooked diet, you're probably going to get pancreatitis. Fats oxidize when they are cooked. So that is a problem. So for instance, Answers Pet Food, very high fat diet, but it is a raw pet food. Keto diets, very high fat diets, they're fed raw. And the reason they don't cause pancreatitis is because the fats are not oxidized. Now, if I'm saying that it's not just fats that cause pancreatitis, what else contributes to pancreatitis in our pets. What else do we need to be aware of? What else do we need to be looking for? Pancreatitis is caused by inflammation, inflammation in the body. So if you have a pet who has an inflammatory process going on, you need to get to the bottom of that inflammatory process. You need to heal the gut. You need to heal the immune system. And putting them on a very strict, low-fat diet is not the only answer. Yes, maybe short term, we need to have them on a low fat, basically pre-digested diet. So a lot of times with these guys to heal the gut, we can use something like uh, the Answers Goat Milk, which is a low fat product fermented, and it's a complete diet. So if your dog or cat had to live on something that was easy to digest, that was going to be very soothing and healing to the gut, something like that as the only thing that they ate for a few days would be a great solution to the problem. Let's just say they don't like it or they're a pet. We have a couple that they get diarrhea when they drink it. It just doesn't agree with them. So yes, when I had Scout, he came to me with so much inflammation in his body and he would have horrible bouts of pancreatitis. And I designed a diet for him, which is on the website, drjudymorgan.com. If you just put in the search bar pancreatitis, my blog about Scout will come up with the recipe that I made for him that healed his gut. And yes, it had chicken as the, the protein base in that diet because chicken is the, the pancreatitis is part of the earth element and the earth element likes things that are yellow. If you look at a, a nice healthy chicken, the skin is yellow, the, the, the meat is a, a nice dark. Um, but we take the skin off for those diets at the beginning. And uh, so I designed a recipe for him that was very low fat. He did great, it healed his gut. 
But what I found that after a few weeks on that diet, because it was so low in fats, his coat got dry, his nose got dry, his pads were dry, his nails were brittle. It happened that quickly. And that was a great lesson for me to learn. You can't put these pets on these extremely low fat diets and just leave them on them for life. Not going to solve the problem. Once you get the healing, which we did with Scout, then we started adding the fats back in. Coconut oil is one of the safest for pancreatitis pets. So that's one of the first oils that I would look at getting back in. Fish oils for Scout, the liquid fish oils never worked for him, but encapsulated fish oils, Absolutely not a problem. <laughs> What's going on back there? Uh, we're trying to help Shana. Shana's really, I don't know if it's the weather changes, but she's really struggling with her SM. Um, so what about all provide gently cooked? Great food, great food. It, it's, it's a complete diet. Your pets will do well on that long term. Do you need to use something that's a little uh, lower fat in the very short term? Maybe, I don't know. Depends on the animal. But sentencing these pets to a long term life of eating prescription diets made with really low quality ingredients or diets that are so low in fat that they are not compatible with good health. We need fats. Our brain survives on fats. We need good fats. Our heart survives on omega-3s. Without them, you're going to lose your pet to a shortened lifespan. So, um, you know, there, there's just uh, so much more to pancreatitis than just fats in the diet. It is an inflammatory process. And one of the things that I'll look at in their lab work is what's their platelet count? The platelet count is supposed to be between three and 400,000, maybe even 250 to 400,000. But when I'm seeing platelet counts in the, in the high fours, the 500s, the 600s, that's a pet with a ton of inflammation going on. Look at monocytes in the CBC. Monocytes are the cells that tell us they have chronic inflammation. That's not an acute problem. That's a chronic inflammation. If those monocytes are high. The platelets are high. That's a pet who's dealing with chronic inflammation. And that's what we need to address. Otherwise, we are setting them up for failure. Uh, obesity, it makes pets prone to inflammatory diseases throughout the body, arthritis, pancreatitis. You've got to keep your pets at a healthy weight. So there's so much more that goes into it. And that's what you need to look at the overall health. This is where holistic medicine looks at overall health. We don't look at just the pancreatic enzyme level and go, oh, he's got pancreatitis. You know what? Some pets walk around with high CPLs, particularly on the new Antec testing, and they're perfectly healthy, perfectly normal pets that have zero GI problems going on. So you, you need to take everything as a whole. You can't look at one thing and proclaim, here we go. Here's the, the pinpoint problem. It's not. It's an overall health and it's an overall look at the entire lab, lab results and what's going on with the pet, what the clinical picture looks like. Hopefully that helps a little bit. Um, how can I tell the liquid fish oils didn't work for Scout? So when I use the liquid oils for him, he would get subtle pancreatitis signs. He would walk away from his food. He would get softening of the stools. He would get a little irpy burpy, but putting the capsules in and I could use the large dog capsules. I could still use a high dose for him. Absolutely fine. Had no problem. And don't ask me what the difference is. Um, that's just the way it was for him. Uh, the capsules that we have on the uh, website are a white fish oil. Um, but even with the liquid white fish, he just had more trouble. Um, and I found that with a lot of my pancreatitis patients that they do very well on the encapsulated forms. So uh, it's just a difference in the pets. So um, your dog's allergic to coconut and all white fish oil. I, I, based on the NutriScan test, I would not use that as the, uh, the be all end all to say that your pet can never have those things. I mean, you can certainly use salmon oil. Um, but any of those, uh, and, and I like the NutriScan test. I'm not saying anything, uh, negative about it. Um, I'm just saying that any allergy testing for, for foods has to be looked at very critically and very carefully. Um, they're not, a, a uh, the be all end all. Um, it's, it, there's a lot of interpretation that goes in with them. Okay. I got to get some work done before I have to go torture myself at the dentist. Everybody have a wonderful day.